In today's lesson, our I can statement is I can hit a ball with a bat or any other type of um, utensil you can get your hands on. We will discuss that. And we will hit a ball with our bat or object um, by following these steps. We're gonna start with our stance, hand position, step and hips, contact and follow through. Hello, Kentwood friends. On today's lesson, we are going to work on hitting. So we've kind of been um, thinking about baseball skills. We've been doing some throwing and some catching. And so today we're going to work on some hand-eye coordination. Um, some of my younger friends might think of this as striking because pretty much we're using an object to strike a ball. Um, but we're going to call it hitting like baseball or softball or wiffle ball hitting. Um, as for equipment today, um, there's lots of different things we can use to make this work. Um, because I'm here at school, I get to use PE equipment, so I have a batting tee, and I also have um, a bat, which would be the best thing. So if you happen to have a batting tee and a bat, that would be great. Um, depending on where you're gonna work, you're gonna need to pay attention to what you're using. If you are working inside, you definitely are going to need space before you swing something like this. Um, so I would recommend watching the lesson and getting outside if you can. If you have to do it inside, then make sure you have lots of space before you swing your bat or whatever you're using for your bat. Um, for my friends that don't have a tee and a bat, there are some other things we can do. Um, you just want anything long, that you can hit with. So I grabbed a broom, and then a lot of brooms, you can just twist off the actual sweeping part and use this as your bat. So you could use a broomstick. Um, I also grabbed like a pool noodle or anything, once again, anything long and skinny that you can use to hit with. Um, I even thought, I didn't bring one from home, but a regular two liter. So this is not a two liter, this is, I don't know, 12 ounce or something, but a regular, you know, a bigger two liter, kind of something that wouldn't be the best because it's not really long, but it's probably something you have at home. Um, so that would be a good idea. You could use, you know, like a wrapping paper roll, um, any, like if grandma or grandpa or someone has a cane around, anything long and, um, you know, this wide around or so that you can swing would be a good idea. As for a ball, <clears throat> as usual, a regular size ball would be fine. Tennis ball you might likely have around your house. A crumpled up piece of paper would be just fine today because we're pretty much working on making the contact. We are not really worried about where our ball is going to go. So a uh, crumpled up piece of paper would do just fine. So why don't you take a few minutes, find um, what you're going to use, and then we'll get going. All right, let's get started. Um, the first thing you need to do is to make sure you have uh, decided which is your dominant hand, which is your dominant side. I'm a right-handed person. Um, so you want to just keep in mind, right hand is my dominant, I'm going to bat like a righty. Or if you're a left hand dominant, you're going to bat like a lefty. But make sure you keep that in mind because as for where your hands go, where your body goes, that's going to really matter. So um, keep that in mind. Second thing that you really need to think about is kind of like, where is my pitcher? Because if we were going to play this game uh, together in real life, there would be someone throwing the ball down for you to hit or if you're playing softball pitching the ball down like this for you to hit so I'm imagining that you guys are like the pitcher or the batter so imagine as you watch me do this I'm looking directly at where the ball is coming like towards me um, so at home you are going to need to whether you draw a piece of paper with a face on it and make that your picture um, not picture your pitcher person who's or, you know, who's like throwing the ball at you to hit. Um, no one is really gonna do that today, but you need to imagine that so that you know which side um, of the ball to be on. So I want you to think about that. Decide where your pitcher is. Um, and then also, um, my tee has like a home plate to it, but you probably don't have a tee at home. So maybe put a piece of paper, a pillow, something that kind of gets you thinking, you know, like this is where home plate is, depending on, once again, what you're using. 
Um, we'll talk about your tea if you don't have a tea. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Right now, we're just worried about like what our body is doing. So, um, <clears throat> in fact, just so that we can get the right idea, I'm just gonna use my sweater as my plate. So I'm gonna imagine that's home plate. Um, and so being a righty, I'm going to stand on this side of it. My right hand, my dominant side is to the back of the pitcher. So there's the pitcher, that's you. I've got my right hand here. So if you're a lefty, then this is your dominant. You want that away from the pitcher, just kind of like when you're doing your overhand throw. So um, we've got stance, which means you stand near the plate, not on top of it. Um, your feet are kind of shoulder width apart, so they're just like this. They're not super far, they're not super close, they're just about like that. And um, hand position, so your hands, um, your dominant hand goes on top. Your fists touch, you don't hold the bat like this. Um, your fists touch and your dominant hand is on the top. So if you switch those around, things are not gonna work out well. So you want your dominant hand on top, your dominant side is away from the pitcher, and we've got our stand so our legs are apart, um, kind of maybe one foot away from the plate. I'm not on top of the base. I'm about a step off of it. Got my hands, dominant hand on top, dominant side away from the pitcher. Um, when it, you get ready, so you've got your hands there. Actually, you're going to pull back like this, kind of. So if you're watching me from the side, if my pitcher was over there, i got my hands ready. My hands come back, so they're not here in the center. They come back. And you notice my elbow goes up. So I've got back like this. And then when I'm going to step and swing my hips. So step and hips is this front leg kind of steps, and my hips turn. So I've got here. And then I'm swinging, contact means that's when my bat hits the ball, and then follow through, my bat keeps coming through after I've actually hit the ball. So stance, hand position, dominant hands on top. I'm kind of pulling back here. So once again, if you couldn't see, I start here, pull back, elbows are out, and then I do that step, my hips rotate, bat comes through, that's where the contact is, and then ball goes like that or your follow through. So I want you to take whatever you're working with at home, you know, maybe it's a noodle and a sweater, and that's your home base and you're thinking, there's my pitcher, and you're just working on getting your hand, right hand up or your dominant hand on top, back here with your elbow up, and you're gonna step and you're gonna twist your hips. It's kind of like I'm squashing a bug. If you watch this back leg, when I go from here to here, I'm kind of squashing a bug make contact and then my bat just kind of comes around when I'm done. So I want you to spend some time. That's a lot of stuff. You might need to um, you know, pause the video. I want you to spend some time getting your hands right, elbows, and just doing this action. For my friends that are um, don't have lots and lots of equipment, um, this might be as far as it goes today. Maybe you're just imagining with a stick and you're working on this uh, motion with your body. Once again, for my lefties, you put left hand on top. This feels really weird for me. Step, twist, and then you come through. All right, so go ahead and practice your form for the next few minutes. All right, friends, here's how we're gonna practice for most of us that do not have a tee. I grabbed um, an empty pop, it doesn't matter what size. It's pretty much a platform that's gonna hold your paper ball. Um, if you wanna use a real ball, that's fine. If you need to put a little water in the bottom to make it steady, that's okay too, but I just have an empty one and a paper ball. And it's sitting on a table um, because obviously the ball that I'm gonna hit, I don't wanna put this on the ground and it's way too low for me to hit. So I've got it on a table. Um, I don't have anything around. If you're doing this at home, you're really gonna need to be thoughtful about where you're swinging. I'm gonna use this just in case today. That would be safer than using a real bat. All right, so let me see here. I've got, I'm kind of adding, you know, I'm lining myself up with the ball, got that dominant hand on top, I'm gonna bring back, and then I'm going to step, my hips come through, and then here comes my hit. 
So obviously I will increase my speed once I get comfortable, but once again, we're not worried about where our hit is going. We're just working on getting our body used to this motion. So I'm gonna work in, kind of in slow motion for a while. So dominant hand, back here, elbow up, step hips, ball comes through contact. So my eyes are on that ball through and then follow through. Um, I want you to spend some time hitting your ball off your tee or once again, if you're lucky enough to have a real tee, that would be fine. Um, if you have someone at home, you're gonna need them later. Um, I would actually prefer that you start by hitting off a tee. Don't just go right to having your brother or your mom or dad, you know, throwing balls at you because it's a lot harder to work on your hit when the ball's coming at you versus when it's just sitting still. So really try to find um, some things so that you can hit a ball that's sitting still for your practice. So I want you to practice hitting off a tee for a good three to five minutes. All right, I hope that you spent some time hitting off um, your tee. Um, once again, slow motion swings, thinking about all of um, the steps. I'm way more concerned with the form of your body versus where your ball goes or how hard you're swinging. Um, so depending on, once again, where you're at, um, what kind of equipment you have or people around to help. If you have gotten a lot of practice hitting off your um, tee, then you could move outside or you could have a family member throwing um, like a sock ball at you while you go ahead and try to swing. Um, you could once again head out in your yard with a ball and a bat and go ahead and try, but it's gonna get way more difficult when the ball is moving at you. So don't get too hard on yourself if that is too difficult and just go back to working on your form and hitting on a tee. Um, the next link has um, some practice where you're gonna need a big person or even just, a, it actually doesn't need to be a big person. It can be um, you know, another student or child too. You just need a mirror and someone to hold the ball. It's a neat way to practice. So please take a look at that video and participate if you can.